Hey everyone, this is Jeff Gumis from Crowded Learning, and I'm excited to welcome you back to our Lynx event, Build Your Toolkit for Adult Learning with Crowded Learning. For those of you just joining, this is a 10-week event that is nearly at the halfway point. But even if you're just jumping in right now, that's okay. The event is structured so that a new topic related to reading and writing instruction and technology integration is started every two weeks. For the past two weeks, we explored a selection of freely available leveled resources that support development of comprehension with adult learners. This week, we are switching our focus to fluency, and today we're going to introduce a handful of free and open education resources that come from highly recommended sources by adult educators and are designed to help adult learners build fluency skills. As a reminder, Fluency is one of the four components of evidence-based reading instruction. Whereas alphabetics, or phonics, looks at a reader's ability to decode the sounds of letters and letter combinations such that they can read an individual word, fluency refers to a reader's ability to read a series of words, or a text, at an appropriate speed and with appropriate expression, intonation, and rhythm. When developing fluency, it is critical learners are working with texts that are easy to read, as opposed to texts that might prove challenging to the student. The College and Career Readiness Standards for Adult Education provide guidance related to what level of complexity and readability texts should have for learners at their various levels. Now, for the past two weeks, we have focused on three high-quality sources for leveled readings that allow for differentiation. While our focus during that time was on comprehension, these same libraries certainly can also be used to find texts at appropriate levels for learners to practice fluency. The resources we are going to focus on for the next two weeks include leveled libraries as well. However, they also have features specifically designed to provide ample opportunities for learners to practice fluency. Two of these resources were developed by Southwest Minnesota Adult Basic Education. Reading Skills for Today's Adults is a set of nearly 350 readings addressing topics such as parenting, safety, health, money, work, and more. Reading Skills for Healthcare Workers includes 175 leveled readings at intermediate levels, all of which are contextualized to healthcare scenarios and settings. Reading Skills for Today's Adults is a much-loved library of readings that I've heard mentioned dozens of times when asking educators what free and open education resources they are using. However, many people are not aware of the recent update that was made and that we are about to explore. This new version has a new URL. It is important to note this because at present, the original site is still up and is what will appear at the top of your results in a Google search. The new URL is readingskillsfortoday.com and you'll see with the number four. Please note this as all of the updates you are about to learn about are only available on the new site. And now I'm excited to have the opportunity to share a recent interview I had with Christine Kelly, who helped lead the update of Reading Skills for Today's Adults. In the interview you are about to hear, she provides a detailed overview of reading skills for today's adults, including a walkthrough of the exciting updates that make an already great open educational resource even better. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm Christine Kelly, and uh, I'm in Minnesota. I am an adult basic ed teacher, uh, and I am also the Minnesota Literacy and English Language Arts Coordinator uh, for adult basic ed in Minnesota. Um, and I kind of became the lead for an update for Reading Skills for Today's Adults, which has been around for about 15 years online. Uh, it's a free online site. It's used across the nation. And um, with a lot of the changes happening in ABE, particularly a focus on uh, the college and career readiness standards and a need to update the texts, um, I headed an effort to both align Reading Skills for Today's Adults, and do an overall update. And so we have a brand new website. And uh, the website, if you are familiar with the, the previous website, uh, this is organized a little differently. The old website was organized uh, starting with the, the stories were in grade levels. They're not here. There are 16 levels. 
and the stories are leveled um, by uh, CCRS approved measures. Um, one is Lexile, which a lot of people are familiar with. Um, the the stories were first Lexiled so that they could be placed in a band, uh, an A, B, C, or D band for the CCRS. And then with the, in each level, and I'm actually going to go here to level three, the stories are placed in each level based on CCRS level first. And then in order to sequence them within a level, uh, I used what's called ATOS, which is also a CCRS approved readability tool. And so the stories start uh, with the easiest readability, and that's quantitative readability, uh, and then increase throughout the level. And you can see that if I click on one of the stories here, we have some characteristics of the site that are the same um, as before. Um, there is the reading, and then uh, there is an ability for students to listen to three different speeds of the reading. And you can see down here on the screen, there's a first reading, a second reading, and a third reading. The first reading is mostly to expose students to the words, the pronunciation for accuracy. The second reading um, ch starts to chunk the words into meaningful chunks uh, to help students start to develop a little bit of, of rate and prosody. And the third reading will be a normal reading with inflection uh, so that students can build up and hopefully then be able to fluently read the passage um, with accuracy and also with rate and prosody. Uh, these can also be used, for example, I know one teacher who will um, play these for the class and as a class they'll listen, um, but students can access this as well on their own because it's a free website. Also, like the old website, there are um, options to, to uh, print out uh, pre-questions and post-questions. So pre-questions for the stories uh, are a couple pre-questions, and if the document is printed out, there's room for students to write uh, their answers to the pre-questions. There's also a list of the target words for the particular reading. Uh, this has also been an update because uh, we dug in and pulled out more academic vocabulary and some idiomatic vocabulary or words that perhaps students know one meaning for but may not know the meaning that's used in this particular text. So there's been a vocabulary expansion. Also, there are post questions. And the post questions, again, uh, these can be printed out, and uh, there's room to answer the questions. There are general understanding comprehension questions, and then two options for writing. One is uh, more text-based, and one is uh, more personal connection to the topic. So these are these are pieces that remain from the previous the previous website. And also one final option, especially if you're doing this with a fluency group, a small group, or if a volunteer is uh, working with students, the entire, uh, the pre-questions, the target vocabulary, the actual reading, the questions for understanding, and the writing can all be printed out in one document to share with students. Something we're really excited about in the Reading Skills for Today's Adults update is the new CCRS supplement that's been created for each text. And we created this because we wanted to create additional activities that were aligned uh, with the CCRS. And we also wanted to create something that is adaptable. So unlike the other documents, uh, which I showed, the pre-questions, the post-questions, the entire story doc, this is downloadable as a Word document so that as a teacher, um, you have the ability or a teacher has the ability to adapt the supplement. So there may be certain activities on the supplement that you want to use and maybe others you don't or um, perhaps you have an additional activity you would like to create um, that would go with the story or with the target vocabulary you can download this and you can change it at will and adapt it however you'd like to, to do depending on your context, 
um, depending on the, the students that you're working with or how you're working with this material. So what you see here is one of the supplements. And at the top here, it's level one, which is not a grade level equivalency. It's just level one on the, the website. And this text uh, falls within the CCRS level A band. So, um, which is the very beginning um, of, of the CCRS levels. So you see the vocabulary, the definitions correspond to the way the word is used in the particular text and um, parts of speech moves down into a vocabulary closed paragraph. So now students are demonstrating some understanding of the text in kind of a summary paragraph um, and using the target vocabulary words. To expose them to an additional context, um, we uh, have an activity that's a fill in the blank activity where students are using uh, the words in sentences that aren't related to the reading, but expose them to additional contexts. The next, activity that is uh, that appears in each supplement is a language activity. Um, this may be an activity that's related to language conventions. It might be using a comma or using um, um, pronouns correctly. It may also be a vocabulary activity. In this case, it's using the simple present verb tense. And so there is a, a language activity because that is a strand in the standards that we wanted to make sure uh, that we addressed. And then we have a set of speaking questions. And at the lower levels, uh, the speaking questions have sentence starters or frames um, built into the activity to help support students uh, at the lower levels, forming their answers um, to the questions. And a big part of why we created these speaking questions is that we know that students, we want students to be exposed to the text. We want them to know the vocabulary. We want them to talk about the text and build some of that comprehension orally before they ever have to do any writing uh, or um, answering any assessment questions about it. Number four, that part, uh, the assessment questions. We're really excited about this because we created the questions to follow um, the progression of text dependent questions that are called for in the standards. So the first questions are typically about the main idea or the just the overall gist. Uh, moving into some questions about details. There are going to be questions um, about vocabulary. Uh, these ones here are mostly because it is, it's at a very low level, um, mostly uh, a focus on details. But building up, question six happens to be what is important to Joe, and um, building up to something that may require some inferencing by the students. Uh, by the time you get into the higher levels, there are 10 assessment questions, and uh, those questions may also um, uh, target language conventions, looking at certain sentences and doing some combining. Um, we tried to create questions that would um, help students prepare for the tests like the CASAS and the TABE. And then finally, we have the writing. And the writing has uh, option A will always be text-based, where students need to go back to the text and use evidence from the text. Option B, is going to be a more personal uh, writing prompt where students can connect their own life, their own experiences, their own opinions to the topic of the reading. And again, like the speaking section, the uh, lower levels uh, of uh, the lower level stories will have sentence frames uh, that can help students um, formulate some of that writing, take some of that cognitive load off so that they can focus on the content. Teachers don't have to use all of these sentence frames or even any of them, but uh, we know that that is a kind of language support that's very, very helpful for students as they're really learning to write uh, and express themselves. So that is the downloadable supplement that um, teachers can change um, or keep as it is, but we're really very excited about that. Now, I think I'm going to go back to the website here.
One additional feature, and um, I'm working on these right now, is if we go back here to one of the levels, I'll go to four here. Um, we are adding answer keys, and we know for teachers it's just for efficiency, and um, that was a request from teachers here in Minnesota, and these are um, downloadable, and some teachers like to use them uh, with higher level students, leave them so that students can check their own work, or teachers can use them for efficiency, but um, there are answers to both the old PDF story questions, and then of course questions uh, or answers to um, all the activities in the supplement. Okay. Thank you, that is fantastic. I've actually been showing this to folks as I present and didn't, even within the supplement, the, the thought <laughs> that has been put into that is, is quite extensive and thank you for that overview. I think that's gonna be very helpful to folks. And and that's gonna be the focus of our discussion moving forward. I, I have a couple of questions for you just, I mean, since this has been around for so long, just in terms of how teachers are using it, particularly the fluency pieces, um, do, do students, are you, have you found that teachers when, when using this, they're giving sort of students guidance in terms of going to a certain level and having them self-select, uh, or are they sort of directing them to do certain stories um, as either a whole class or individual? Well, there's the great thing about, um, about reading skills for today's adults is there's a lot of different ways to use it. And um, teachers, um, as we're working here in Minnesota, for example, we know um, the, the levels of our students. You know, we may be teaching a class that happens to have mostly students who are at the CCRS level B, for example, so kind of that second, third grade level. Or we may have multi-level classes where we have students all across the board. Um, so, um, you know, the, the stories are fairly easy um, to choose for students because they are leveled um, as far as the CCRS levels A, B, C, or D. Um, students can certainly, um, because there are several levels, I think that level A um, actually um, is at least three or four levels on here, so that's almost 100 stories. And um, students can certainly go on. Um, I know that in some classrooms, uh, one up north, I was notified or I was um, received an email recently where during computer time, she has students um, on choosing because choice is good um, as long as they're, you know, within, um, within an appropriate level, going ahead and choosing um, which stories that they'd like to read and which stories that they'd like to work on. Um, this has also been widely used uh, as a fluency tool in, uh, in a volunteer led groups or in one on one uh, fluency work or in entire classroom settings where everyone gets a copy of the reading and um, students work on it uh, together. I think that the, the, um, the, the way that I always used it was I would print out an appropriate text. Uh, for fluency practice, and I would um, do some echo reading depending on the level of the student, uh, so the student could could learn the text and then practice the text, and then I would actually use this. Um, I would have students do like a final read um, and uh, for fluency, and then I would uh, track their fluency and assess their fluency. Um, and so that's, there, there's so many different ways, and students can access this website at home. And even if they don't print out the questions and do the supplement, they're still free to listen to, um, to three different speeds of the text as many times as they want to, uh, to feel comfortable being able to, to read that text fluently. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I know this is uh, when I talk to teachers about what they're using, free resources, uh, reading skills for today's adults often comes up. Um, and actually within that, if you if you do currently use reading skills for today's adults, you will note that the URL is actually different on the new site. Mm -hmm. um, so you may still be going to the old site. So um, that information is, is gonna be in all of the materials we share this week, but I think I'm excited to have people exploring um, the update and in particular that supplement. And I wanna say thank you for your time and for all of your amazing work on, on, on building this library that we know is incredibly valuable for our learners. 
Well, thank you. And Southwest ABE, they've always kind of been trailblazers, and they, they saw a need for adult-oriented texts, you know, about 15 years ago. And I always want to call out the fact that I had two amazing ABE teachers who, uh, uh, you know, who took this on and um, created these supplements. So it was really, it was definitely a group effort. Awesome. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Jeff.